Good afternoon, good morning. You all are the blessedness of the Father. I thank the Lord for each and every one of you. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. I am just here today just to bring an encouraging word onto each and every one of us because I believe this is the time and the season that the Lord is opening doors unto each and every one of us. Yes, it is time. There are some doors that the Father is opening unto us in this hour and it is with intentionality and by faith that he wants to what? He wants to help us to what? To get into the door that what? He has already ordained for us to walk into. Remember, Jesus said, in the book of John chapter 10, verse 9, he says, I am the door. So we thank God that through Christ Jesus, we have access to the doors that the Father has opened and for us to be able to walk into. Because in times past, there are a lot of us. We have either missed doors that we ought to enter or the Father has opened doors for us that we were not sure if it was the right door or not. And for some of us, by faith, we enter through that door and yet he is opening much more unto each and every one of us so it is with our own what intentionality that we have to ask the lord you know most of the time when the scripture is read unto us behold i have opened for you a door you know a lot of us believe that you know once the door is open you know we just we're just like waiting <laughs> so what is the door that the lord has opened unto us but we have to intentionally ask the father what door he has opened unto us so that we can better walk into that door to receive what the father intends for us in this hour you know the scripture that i want to begin with is basically uh, Revelation chapter 4. So I want us to understand that there are different doors in the Bible. So, you know, there's different doors uh, through Christ Jesus that the Father continues to open for us. And yet he's asking you, you know, it's a place where you're coming up higher to ask him because he doesn't want you to miss it in this hour. No. Remember, you know, we've just entered into another dimension of the year. <laughs> you know, people like always say is the other half of the year. But the truth of it is we're always in the Father. But there is so much acceleration in the realm of the Spirit. And the Father is doing a lot of things, redeeming time because the days are evil. So it is in this hour that he's beckoning unto each and every one of us that as I am opening these doors unto you, I want you to be intentional by seizing the opportunity to be able to enter through them for what I have for you. So for some of you, it might be doors to, to having a career, doors to a job, doors to business, doors to ministry, doors to marriage. So it could be whatever door the Father is opening, but it is up to you to what? Inquire of the Lord. So this is the foundational scripture in which I am beginning with. The Bible says, after this, I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. So the Lord is calling you and saying, I want you to enter through this door because there are things that are happening in your life in this hour. And I don't want you to miss it. So I want to give you revelation because a lot a lot of people are a lot of you are waiting on the Lord for something maybe it's a prayer that you've prayed you're believing with expectation of the promise in which the Father has ordained for you and now is that time that is what is opening that door for you to be able to walk in into what he has already ordained for you can you see it because your time and your hour has come the Bible says in John 17 Jesus lifted up his eyes and he says father the hour has come so now is your time. What you have been praying for is here. And the Father wants you to be what? Intentional about going in and receiving that in which he has what? Given unto you. For some of you, it's going to be a process. For some of you, it's humility. For some of you, it can be the dimensions of the Spirit to be able to receive what the Father intends for you in this door that what he has opened unto you. So I want to help us to understand, you know, through the Bible, there are some doors that the Father, you know, it has already been written in the Bible that he wants us to what? To be able to be aware of. So I'm just going to pick about two, three of these uh, scriptures for you to be able to understand. And I can leave the rest with you that in your intimate time with the Father, you can ask him about the door that you're basically believing God 
to enter through. Now, I'm going to begin from Acts chapter 5 and verse 19. It says, But during the night, the, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Some of you, you are in dire situations in which you have been believing God. Father, I just need you to bring me out of this. I just need you to bring me out of this. I just need you to bring me out of this. Whatever it is that you have been asking the Lord to bring you out of, whatever it is that you've been asking the Lord to lead you out of, and he's saying, in this door that I have opened, remember in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, he says, I have opened a door for you in heaven. And in Acts chapter 5, he says, an angel of the Lord. Why? Because the apostles, they got into trouble for what was not their fault. They were preaching the gospel and then they were locked up. So many of you, you're probably in a position where you got into that situation. It was not your fault at all. Maybe you were blamed. Maybe it was done to you out of jealousy, out of envy, according to the scripture here and eventually it got you where you were. Somebody did something at your place of work and you got fired for it. In the ministry, maybe someone did something and yet people blamed you for it. In the family, Maybe it was somebody who did something that they were not supposed to do, but yet it was to you they looked at and they decided to blame you for it. And now you found yourself in a situation and you're like, Father, vindicates me. Father, vindicates me. Father, vindicates me. And he says, an angel of the Lord is here to bring you out of what? To open that door for you to come out of the situation that you're in. So pay attention to the angel as it what? As it begins to lead you out. Can you see it? So for so many of you that are in those situations, the Lord is helping you to understand an angel of here. An angel is here to lead you out. So we can begin to see also in Revelation chapter 4 that we just read is the doors of Revelation. Can you see? There is a door open. I must show you a door to show, a door to show. So Revelation, the door to enter into Revelation, Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. It says that wisdom and revelation to know him better. So for some of you, for whatever it is you're in, the revelation, you're entering into the door of Revelation to be able to what? Bring you into the place that he has prepared for you. So revelation about your circumstances, revelation about your job, revelation about your business, revelation about your marriage. So the door is open unto you and is asking you to come up. So which means it's just, it's an invitation. It's nothing you've got to work for. It's just for you to step into it in what? In absolute faith. Can you see it? It's asking you to step in in absolute faith and receive the revelation that you need for where you need to be. To God be the glory. So we talked about the doors to lead you out. You know, they were in jail. The doors of revelation to help you to know what next to do. Now, the third one is the door of answers. Can you see? The doors of answers. And where can we see that in the Bible? Acts chapter 12 and is written in verse 14. The Bible says in verse 12, when this had done on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. Can you see? Now, I want you to understand it. The church, Peter was thrown into prison because Herod wanted to kill him. Now, we begin to see that the church began to pray for him. And finally, the answers to their prayer was at the door. But <laughs> to, their, to Rhoda's amazement and excitement, she didn't open the door. She went back and basically what? Told the other apostles, hey, Peter is at the door. So the Father is helping you to understand for some of you, the door that you're entering in this hour is the door of the answers that you have been praying for. Yes, some of you have been praying for things to manifest in your life. You've been praying for circumstances to change in your life. And the Father is saying the door, the answers are at the door in which you're entering into right this minute. So for every answer, to your prayer. You're about to enter into that door. This is where you begin to see the answers begin to manifest. The answers. Maybe you didn't understand some certain things to be able to walk in certain areas. Now, as you walk through this door, the clarity of it is made clear to you. Now, you're able to receive. So, that is the very definition of that door. To receive what the Father has always ordained for you right from the very what? The very beginning. So, you can begin to see 
Because the Bible declares, if you read the book of Colossians chapter 4, a lot of people have been praying for doors. That, Father, if you open the door of this nation to me, if you open the door, I want you to open the door of a nation, open the door for this job. According to Colossians chapter 4, because Apostle Paul was praying that we pray that we, a door may be open for us. Can you see? They were asking for a door that it may be open. And this is the dimension for a lot of you, that the door of your answers may be open. The door of revelation may be open. The door of whatever situation you're in may be open. And the Father is saying to you, now the door of the answers to what you've been believing for is now what? Is now being opened unto you. Because in verse 16, the Bible says, Peter kept on knocking. So your answer, <laughs> your answer is knocking on the door. And the Bible says, Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door, they were astonished. Can you see it? The answer kept knocking because they had been praying, and the answer arrived because you know who brought the answer? Yet an angel again. Can you see it? An angel. So the door of the jail, the angel. Doors of revelation, heaven, angels. The door of answers, an angel. So you can begin to see it, that the angel brought the answer by releasing Peter from prison. And then Peter walked, the answer walked to the door, and with excitement, they opened the door, and there was the answer. So for majority of you, this is where you're walking into the answers of your prayers, and the door to the answers is what you're standing in front of. Can you see it? So now, another dimension of a door, uh, of the door that we're basically speaking here, is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. And in 1 Corinthians 16, it helps us to understand that majority of us, yes, we have been contending in the spirit. Because he says here, he says, I'm going to start from verse 15, from, from verse 8. It says, but I will stay on in Ephesus until Pentecost, because a great door for effective work has been open to me and there are many who oppose me. Can you see it? Now we begin to understand that you know Apostle Peter or Apostle Paul was going to preach the word. He was staying where he was you know and he had already discerned that the father has already opened a door but there were so many things trying to come against him going through that door. So for majority of you the father has opened the door to the ministry, the door to the business, the door to the marriage, the door to your relationship, the door to your finances. He has opened the door but there are many that keeps opposing. They don't want you to walk through it because they know the kind of person that you are. They know who you are in the spirit. Remember Jesus, right? When Jesus was born, the wise men came because they followed the star. Can you see? But Herod had other plans because he wanted to kill Jesus. But we thank God for the angel that basically told them to go to Egypt and stay there till Herod dies. So you can begin to see for many of you, a great door, either for business, it has been opened. Open. And for marriage, it has been open. And it says to her what? There are many who oppose you from going into that door. But today, I judge the powers of what? Opposition against you. I judge the powers of adversaries of, against you. And I command that right this minute, everything that has stood in the way of that door be removed from your presence. And you're walking through that door to the glory of God. Can you see it? Because it is time for you, for that work to be done. It's time for you to be married. It's time for you to have those children. It's time for you for your business to be lifted. Lifted up. It's time for you for you to walk into that ministry. It's time for you to secure that job. It's time for you to walk into that career. For what the Father has called you to do, it is time for you to enter that great door. If you are basically about to move into another nation, the Father is helping you to understand that the door to that nation has been opened unto you. Whether it is immigration, the door for your passport has been opened unto you. And He's helping you to understand that whatever it is, it says because a great door for effective work has opened. It is not that it is going to be open. It is past tense. It is opened unto you. By faith, step in. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So this is where we begin to understand it from Revelation chapter 3 and what? And verse 8. And what did he say in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8? Can you see that dimension? It says here, it says, I know your works, 
See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. Yes, it says, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Can you see? For majority of you, this door is what, you know, the Father is saying, I have opened it for you and there is nobody that can shut this door. Why? Because I know you have little strength, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. I I know because you have been obedient to me. You have been so obedient to me and I know how tired you might feel at this point in time. But I can assure you that the door that I've opened to your marriage, the door that I've opened to your finances, the door that I've opened to having babies, the door that I've opened for your business, for your career, for your job, for, your, for all that I've called you to do, this door, there is no one that can ever shut it. Because you know why? No, though I know your deeds. It says it can never be shut because I know you have little strength and you have kept my word. So because of your obedience to me is the reason why I have opened this door and there is nobody that can shut this door that I've opened unto you. Can you see it? It says, I have opened that door and there is no one that can shut it. So go forth in victory to receive that in which the Father has already ordained for you. So you can begin to see in this dimension that this is the Father helping you to understand that I am opening doors for people in this hour and doors of opportunity, doors for you to what? To receive what I have already ordained for you. So it is in this hour that you can go to the Father and ask him, Lord, what are you asking me to do? You know, for some people, you know, the Bible tells us, according to the book of Psalm 24 and 7, it says that, you know, look for the, uh, the let's read it together <laughs> so that I can, I can better, I can better speak this in the dimension that the Father is speaking it in. So Psalm 24 and verse 7, and this is what he says. He says, lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up you ancient doors that the King of glory may come in. For some of you, the King of Glory is about to show off in a grand style over your situation. For whatever that is going on in your life, you know, there are some people that the Lord has not allowed anyone to help you. Regardless of how many times they want to help you, sometimes they walk away. Regardless of how much they want to be there for you, they walk away. The reason why is, he's telling you that the King of Glory is coming into your situation because he wants to receive all the glory concerning you. Because some people, they will help you and they will go away. They will start boasting. Oh, I'm the one who helped that boy. I'm the one who helped that girl. That man over there, if it had not been for me, if it had not been for me, that person would not have come into the dimension they are in. If it had not been for me, they would not have known what they know today. Can you see it? They will continue to boast in themselves rather than in the Lord. So that's why the Father has not allowed anyone to help you. And he's saying, this door, this ancient door, you're coming into it, that the King of glory. So it's open that the King of glory may come in. Why? Because he wants to take glory for your life. Can you see him? That the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord who is strong and mighty. So rejoice. But I say rejoice because a lot of you, this is where new beginnings are happening in different dimensions. That is why Jesus reiterated unto us in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And what did he say in Revelation chapter 3? He says, behold, I stand at the door and I what? I knock. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Behold, I stand at the door. Can you see it? And I knock. So the Lord is helping you to understand that I stand at the door and I'm knocking. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. So for some of you, it's not the Lord who has closed the door. Some of you, you shut the door on yourself. Yes, <laughs> you shut the door. So you shut the door because of hurt, because of what you've been through, because of pain, because of disappointment or what people have done to you in times past. And Jesus is saying, I am here. I am coming once again. I am knocking on your door. And if you open that door unto me, I will bring the healing that you need. If you open that door unto me, I'll bring the restoration that you need. If you open that door unto me, I will come in. Everything that you need to know. For some of you, it might be that you want to know the Lord even so much more. If you open that door, letting go of what you know, then together I will come in and I will eat with you and you with me. In oneness, we'll do this together. Can you see it? 
So the father is basically is basically encouraging you to let go and allow him to come in so that he can do in your life what needs to be done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So this is where I am going to ask each and every one of you, right in this place, to be what? Expectant. Because the Lord wants to move mightily in your life. You have waited, you have trusted, you have believed, you have walked in faith, you have obeyed, you have continued in the word, you have praised, you've celebrated other people when people did not celebrate you. You've rejoiced with other people when they did not rejoice with you. You. You've basically, you are there, you've encouraged all other people when you yourself, you did not receive any encouragement. And the Father is helping you to understand in this hour that I am here. I am opening a door unto you. And because I want to take the glory for your life, this door, no one can shut it. For whatever you're in, you're coming out of it. And it's a place where he's helping you to understand. For so many of you, he says, you know, maybe you've been doing things behind the scene. Maybe you've been on YouTube, you've been behind this, you know, you'll be doing things behind the scene. Now it's about to give you platforms to be able to what? Do so much more. Platform for your business, platform for your marriage, platform for whatever dimension the Father is calling you to, so that you can go forth in what he has called you to do. Because this is your new beginning. This is the dimension of what the Father is calling you to. The word elevation keeps my, keeps manifesting, it's standing out. I keep hearing the word elevation, elevation. I am elevating majority of you because the hour has come that I'm elevating people into the places that I need them to be in this hour. This is where the glory of my name will be seen in them. These ones, they've been prepared in the wilderness like David was and they are coming to the forefront as the king that they are to come and rule and reign in the dimension that I have called them to, to rule in business, to rule in ministry, to rule in every dimension that I've called them to and to reign all over creation. Their names will be heard. Their names will be heard because my angels are singing their names in the hearts of people. So in this hour, this is where they are rising and they are shining for their light has come and the glory of the Lord is rising upon them. No longer shall they be delayed. No longer shall they be hindered. Every veil that has covered them, I am removing it for them to, for the light to be able to manifest over their lives that they will be seen and they will be heard. They will be known, known all over as Elijah stood and he was fearless in what I called him to do. This is where majority of you, you are going forth in boldness to do what the Father has instructed you to do. No longer shall you be delayed. And this is where every place where you have walked in and people have rejected and people have mal they maligned you and done all manner of things. I am vindicating. The door of vindication is what you're wearing walking through because I'm vindicating majority of you. I'm bringing my justice over everything that has happened to you that you might walk in the fullness of what I have called you to. So rejoice because it is your new beginning. You've stepped into a new territory. So I rejoice with you. So get ready. Pack your bags, majority of you, because it is time to move into the assignment that I've called you to. You are blessed, you are holy, you are the perfection of my name called inside of you. And this is the dimension where my name will be known all over through you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I bless you all. Be blessed in the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.